There are laptops that are made for power, and there are laptops made for sleek portability. And rarely are the two of those things the same. Well, Apple works some magic here because the M1 Max MacBook Pro 16 is easily the most powerful laptop that I've ever owned, and no kidding, it's also pretty darn sleek and portable. And you know what? You should buy one. So why is that? Let's find out. It even slammed. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. First off, before we get into the video, quick note that nobody provided or loaned me this laptop. I'll never make a you should buy video about something that I don't specifically own. Second, and I know it sounds crazy, but I say this in every one of these videos because I'll get roasted in the comments if I don't. No, I don't actually want you to go out and buy everything in the you should buy series. Team, that's my burden to bear. I just want to share with you my excitement and maybe validate you if you already bought one of these things. This is not me bringing up a club forcing you to buy something. Okay, lots of boring disclaimers up front, but some exciting computer specs coming up next. I wasn't planning on adding specs to this video today, but there are a ton of variations of the MacBook Pro 16 that I do want to touch on it again so we all understand what we're talking about today. The MacBook Pro 16 is not a cheap laptop at any level. Even the base model is a very expensive computer. That lowest end machine comes in at $24.99. Oof. For that money, you'll get the 10-core M1 Pro processor, 16-core GPU, 16 gigabytes of unified memory, and a 512 gigabyte solid state drive. That's a very expensive laptop. And while normally I am pretty bullish, I'm normally on team base models and saving money, here I don't think I'd recommend the base model 16-inch MacBook Pro, mainly because the M1 Pro processor isn't that much different from the M1 standard processor if you're looking at it for a regular old computer. And if you're already spending $24.99 and not getting the best processor you can get, I'd probably go MacBook Pro 14 and spec that out a little higher. I know that's a crazy thing to say in a you should buy video about the MacBook Pro 16, but if you aren't aiming for the absolute most power possible, I don't know that I would recommend the most biggest and most expensive MacBook. My personal model and the one that's informed my opinions on this absolutely incredible machine is the version with the 10 core M1 Max processor, 32 core GPU, 32 gigabytes of unified memory, and a one terabyte solid state drive. The version though costs so much that I'm ashamed to say it out loud, for fear that my wife will hear. So here, I'm gonna subtly put it on screen here. With all of that like waffling out of the way, don't get it twisted. I love this laptop, even if I don't necessarily recommend that base model. So let's get into those reasons to buy this just fantastic machine. This is without a doubt the single most powerful laptop that I've ever seen. And it's really close to the most powerful computer I've ever seen, but in a laptop, leaps and bounds above the rest. And I've had a ton of gaming laptops come through here with both Ryzen and Intel processors. Sure, those can also be very powerful and they are very useful for their primary function of gaming, but the M1 Max processor is just, you cannot imagine just how wild it is. But what's more impressive than the raw power, which you can see on these charts is pretty darn impressive on its own, it's that Apple's been able to figure out how to provide this power at a far less intense level of like electricity than anything else in the market. Obviously, while those benchmarks are very impressive, what I really like is the usable power. I've basically been using this every single day since its release, and it just flies. I don't even worry about how many tabs I have open anymore. Video editing goes faster than even on my desktop PC. It's just so Good. Not only is the CPU powerful, but the GPU inside of this thing also just crushes all sorts of graphical processing tasks. Now, I personally only do video editing, but being able to encode and decode footage so fast, I mean, it makes this a no-brainer if you need to turn your projects around as fast as humanly possible. But again, this is for the M1 Max. The M1 Pro version, despite being a pretty good option itself, isn't that much different than the standard M1, and I've not really seen that noticeable of a difference. Yes, on the bar charts you'll see a difference, but practically speaking, you won't. Another awesome addition to the MacBook Pro 16 itself is high power mode. You can set this inside of the battery preferences to push the processor and GPU even more by burning up some additional battery life if you're like not plugged into the wall. This will give you a warning that you might have to deal with fan noise or more heat generated by the system. But again, much like I've used this every single day, I've kept this in high power mode since I turned this on for the first time, and I've not seen a single difference in either thermal performance or the noise performance. And that's really important because the most important part of that power from a laptop buying perspective is the thermal performance of the overall system. You can put all sorts of impressive specs into a computer, but if it gets too hot, the computer will lower the power itself so it doesn't like 
turn itself into molten slag. I was legitimately nervous about this kind of power inside of a MacBook Pro. We saw not that long ago that in the MacBook Pro 15s, you can put too beefy of a processor in one of these big bodied MacBooks and then have thermal problems. So when you start saying things like, look at how crazy it's a 10 core processor, it's a 32 core GPU. I was nervous. But the craziest part about the MacBook Pro 16 for me is even when running benchmarks and even when doing all of my editing, I've never once heard the fan. I know others that go through very long benchmarks have gotten them to turn on, but regular person me has never once heard the fans or even felt the air move when I put my hand by the vent. This is just, it's still remarkable stuff. And I know I harp on and on in these M1 Mac videos talking about fan noise. And I've seen some of the feedback online by people who think this is just a minor thing to talk about. But when you get used to a silent office, it's really, really hard to deal with, with any kind of noise. I'll never, I'll never go back to how things were with those Intel MacBooks. And even the thought of fan noise, no matter how small, scares me away from the M1 Max MacBook Pro 14. And the best part about the MacBook Pro 16, it's all these little overall quality of life things that matter most. Anything can be powerful today. You have to be a big tech troll or wearing blinders not to see that all of the major computer manufacturers can make a fantastic laptop. For me, it's all about the little conveniences that really make the purchase decision. And much like the minimal fan noise, this MacBook is full of them. The next reason to buy, talking about those quality of life improvements, is the body of this laptop. This is almost the perfect amount of I.O. for a portable computer. You get three Thunderbolt 4 slots, SD card, HDMI, and a headphone jack. That basically ensures that you won't need to buy an adapter or a dongle unless you really need USB-A. Then, okay, you gotta spend like $1 on a USB-C to USB-A adapter. I cannot get over how much I like what they did here. I'm fully on board with Apple backtracking from the 2016 MacBooks and giving us a slightly bigger machine that is infinitely more useful. Plus, if you are someone setting up a working from home system or you wanna use the laptop as both a laptop and desktop replacement computer, those ports do so much more here than they did on the M1 standard laptops. You'll get between three and four external displays out of these between the Thunderbolt ports and the HDMI port, enabling you to easily have your wall o monitor setup that I've seen in more than a few hacker movies. I don't know that they were ever using a MacBook, but you could if you wanted to. I don't actually know anything about hacking. The keyboard is also right up there with the best that Apple's ever made. I've spent a ton of time working off the laptop itself for these scripts for the channel. This keyboard is probably my favorite one of all time. Not only does it look cool with that black background compared to the all silver look of previous generations, but it feels amazing to type on. And obviously that's probably a pretty important part of a keyboard, right? It's just clicky enough to be very satisfying to type on, but it's not so loud that you'll drive folks crazy as you take notes during your teleconference because you forgot to go on mute. But it's also nice and comfy without being too squishy. I feel that this is a good balance between those two and the keys are perfectly placed from each other. I feel like I don't need to stretch to reach any of the keys and I look for excuses to type from the laptop itself instead of using one of my regular keyboards. Plus the trackpad. It's a MacBook trackpad. It's literally the best you can get. Something I don't normally talk about as a reason to buy laptops, but I have to make an exception here, is the speakers. I don't know what kind of magic Apple does, but they have the laptop speaker game locked down. These sound incredible, lots of bass, very clear, and all the other audiophile words that I don't know how to use properly. From one regular person to another, these sound great. And another thing that's a reason to buy tucked into the rest of this physical design talk is the size of the laptop itself. Yes, it's big, this is definitely not a MacBook Air, and it has gained some width when compared to the Intel MacBook Pro 16, but for what you get, it's not all that big. I'm telling you, I've got a ton of 15 inch gaming laptops in my studio right now that don't have the power of this machine and they are the same size or bigger. They'll make more noise and they'll take up more space and they'll need bigger and bulkier charging bricks to make them work. The size here is really striking for how much they were able to fit in and yet still keep it so tight and compact. Look at this thing. I mean, it is a big MacBook, but it's not all that big when you compare it to other computers. I love the size of this thing. The next reason to buy the brand new MacBook Pro 16 is the display. Yes, I talked about the display during the MacBook Pro 14 video, but this one is even nicer. It's bigger, better, and it's hands down the best laptop display that I've ever seen. I love how crisp and how sharp everything on the screen looks. That million to one contrast ratio will blow your socks off the first time you see it. And I love how the computer just feels faster because the monitor refreshes at up to 120 hertz compared to the 60 hertz from older Macs. I love that the darn thing can be used practically anywhere because it can go to a thousand nits of brightness. 
I love the Darn Monitor. And part of buying a laptop is buying a portable machine that, you know, will let you sometimes work off of the monitor. And holy cow, this is the best one you're gonna get. Yes, there is a notch. Yes, it sometimes gets in the way of third-party software, but it really hasn't affected me all that much either when I'm plugged into an external display or when I work off the computer itself. And the final reason I wanna give to buy this wonderful machine is the battery life. It's so wild that everything we've talked about today is something, it just gets better and better and better, and this is no exception. The battery life on the M1 MacBook Pro 16 is insane. 21 hours of life you get. That's basically three days of use without needing to charge. The battery life is the best that you'll get in a laptop and you'll get all of that crazy power. You'll get all the beautiful screen. You'll get all of that while running off the battery. Team, it's the best. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Like I've said, I said this in the intro, I said it in the middle, I've said it a ton. I love this laptop. This is without a doubt and without hesitation, my favorite laptop of all time, stealing that crown from the M1 MacBook Air, which is like the polar opposite of this computer. I didn't think anything else until the next MacBook Air came out would overthrow that as the top of the mountain for me. I'm legitimately shocked at how much I like this. The only thing I don't love is how it interacts with external storage, and I think that's more of a Mac OS Monterey thing instead of a MacBook thing. This laptop is fantastic, but it is very expensive. If you don't need all of this power, I'd probably steer you towards the older M1 machines, especially if you're only getting the M1 Pro, the power difference isn't that much. But if you need the most portable power you can get, I highly recommend this laptop. You won't find anything else like it anywhere. It's just that good. And if you like this video and you are now considering the MacBook Pro 16, good news! You can find my video where I talk about how I have this set up on my own personal desk in this video right here, and you can find it by just clicking right here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.